pregnancies and whether they have a womb or not. They also test what hormones the body is producing and try to determine how the baby's genitals might develop. It's really our um, investigation, almost as detectives, really, an investigation into it and trying to f uh, find out what the external structures are and what the internal structures are. You may end up with testicles with XY chromosomes, but you have a normal female external appearance and you've got a brain that identifies yourself as female. You may end up with ovaries and XX chromosomes and you're identifying though as male. What's more, none of the tests is either or. Each one can be somewhere in between male and female. We can end up with um, all kinds of differences when those things don't all balance out correctly, but generally they balance out in a normal, normal way, a predictable way, and what you get are typically um, females that develop and they turn out as little girls, and males that develop as little males, and that's what we typically see. When you look at the rest of this variance, it's because there's a difference. Determining what all those differences are is what differences in sexual development is all about. What's amazed me the most is that there is such a continuum from the male to the female, and it's really hard to draw a line somewhere neatly in the middle. Nevertheless, a sex has to be written on the birth certificate. So the doctors have no choice but to assign male or female, whichever they and the family believe the child will grow up to identify with best.